when a person has got cancer, there are symptoms. Maybe they can feel nauseous or, you know, a lot of different symptoms. Say symptoms. So the symptoms tell you that that person has got cancer. Am I right? The symptoms can tell you a person has cancer even if they don't know they have cancer. So the Lord said there are symptoms of poverty. I want to share them with you. One symptom of poverty is always arguing. Job 6.25 He says, what does your arguing prove? Part B. There are people who are addicted to being right. It's a symptom of poverty. In your rightness, how far have you gone? So, arguing is a symptom of poverty. Why? Because the moment you are arguing, it means you have held a position. That means no one is going to move you from that position no matter what. So, even if someone comes with information and revelation to help you to prosper, you can't receive it. Therefore, you can't prosper. So, all this arguing you do is a symptom of poverty. What are symptoms of poverty? No vision. If I just talk to you for two minutes, I can tell whether you have arrived or you have, you are going somewhere. A person with no vision is worse than a person with no money. Where the people lack a vision, what happens to those people? What happens to them? Is poverty perishing? So no vision is a symptom of poverty. You need to get a vision quick. Blindness to opportunities. Jeremiah 17 verse, number, 17 verse number 6. He says you shall not see when good comes. Poverty is blindness. <laughs> you look surprised. He says he does not see when good comes. Is it there? Is it there? So when you have the spirit of poverty on you, you can't see opportunities. You can't see opportunities. You can't see money-making opportunities. The symptom of poverty. Laziness is a huge symptom of poverty. There are many people who are too lazy to prosper. Don't go around laser. Did say, ah, less, less. Already that statement. I hate that statement. Many pastors are lazy. People don't give money to you because you're a pastor. They give money to you because you have impact. The level of impact of a man of God determines the level of resources in the life of the man of, man of God. No impact, no resources. Stop complaining. When you impact people's lives, they willingly give. When you are a minister with impact, resources come. I know a lot of men of God watch me from around the world. I hope you've heard what I'm saying. Say laziness. Laziness leads to begging. If you are lazy, you will beg. It's a guarantee. A few scriptures on laziness because this is a big problem in the body of Christ. Listen, giving on God's altar while you are lazy doesn't work. Proverbs 13 verse 4. Say, I refuse to be lazy. I'm on this pulpit five times a week, sometimes seven times a week. I'm not lazy. And not just speaking grammar. No, casting out devils. Strong teachings. Ushering people into the presence of God. This place is packed out every day. People seeking for God. I wake up by 2.30 a.m., 3 a.m. latest. I'm up praying, fasting, seeking the Lord, looking for the presence of God and the power. I arrive here seven, quarter past seven. I'm on the microphone until 9 30, 10, working. So, why should I drive a bicycle like other pastors? The devil is a liar. I'm not a lazy pastor. I drive what I want. I don't eat what is available. I eat what I want to eat. And the Bible says in, Thess in 2 Thessalonians, I think chapter number 3, he says a lazy man should not eat. He says, let him who does not work not eat. In other words, if you are lazy, you are not allowed to develop an appetite. 
From whence will the food come? Second Thessalonians 3 verse 10. God blesses the works of your hands, not the words of your prayer. The works of your hands. If you are praying and not working, get ready for hardship. You will be a hungry prayer warrior. After you have dissipated energy in prayer, after much, much, much hard work, get ready to break that fast with a guava. A guava on a guava tree. People are lazy to pray. People are lazy to give. People are, they, they don't, don't want to fast. The yoke from your family, how will it break off your life if you're not going to fast? How do I know a symptom of poverty? I know because you focus on the problem and they're not interested in the solution. You are addicted to people feeling sorry for you. I don't want anyone to feel sorry for me. If someone is to buy me fuel, it is because they want to connect to me, not to help me. They want to connect to the grace, not to help the grace. Are you listening to me? Symptom of poverty. Always broke. Always. Always broke. It's a big symptom. No money. Lazy people make no impact in society. No impact. You can't have impact being lazy. Study to show yourself approved men of God. Otherwise you'll embarrass yourself on the microphone with nothing to say than just telling people things will work. How would they work? Jesus was not lazy. His parents found him doing something at 12 years old. He said, I must be about my father's business. While other children were playing there with toys and uh, what you call them? Those computer games. What do you call that computer game? PlayStation. Jesus was not playing uh, 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 PlayStation. He was playing prayer station. Always in debt. Always in debt. Even when you don't need to borrow, you just want to borrow. You just feel like borrowing. Someone just moves around selling chickens. You do, not that you need a chicken. You just... <laughs> You are buying because there's a debt offered. You can pay end of the month. So because, it, it, not that you want the chicken, you want the debt. It's a symptom of poverty. You end up to, with those guys, what do they call them? Chimbazwa. Exorbitant interest. Those guys will be your friends. And when they want to harass you, they'll, phone, they'll, they'll be their friends say, the phone you put on loud. And when somebody who you owe phones you, you have to be very polite. It doesn't matter how angry you are. Even if you woke up on the right side of bed, immediately you go on the right side <laughs> for that phone call. <laughs> you have to be very polite. Young boy, 22 years old, said, Yum dare. And now you have to respect him. A 22 year old. I'm a 2000 harassing you because you're in debt. Fight it. It's a symptom of poverty. Fight it. You need to go on a fast about the spirit of debt. Not to get angry at me because you're in debt. No. You fight the spirit of debt and say, Lord, I need to come out of debt. I need to stop borrowing because this, the, the borrower is servant to the lender even if the lender is Amma 2000. Procrastination. The spirit of tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. It's a spirit of poverty. You keep postponing what you're supposed to do. It's a symptom of poverty procrastination, the thief of time and also the thief of opportunities excuses driven there are people who are professional at giving excuses very professional you have a lot of excuses in your life I don't want excuses, I want solutions disorder is a symptom of poverty, Daniel had an excellent spirit not an excellent talent so that means that even excellence has a spirit behind it. Oh, I wish someone got that. Did you get that man of God? Excellence has a spirit backing it. There are people who are just neat and tidy. They have excellence. Hello? But the reason why they are not paid for it is because they don't have an excellent spirit. They have an excellent talent. 
Daniel had an excellent spirit. I hope you got that. That is powerful. Hallelujah. May the spirit of excellence come upon your life. When you get into a, a, a room that is untidy, you must feel like something is crawling on you. Where others find it normal for a car to be dirty. I can't get into a dirty car. I can't, I can't stand a, a dirty car. Keeping a dirty car is a sign that you have the spirit of poverty on you. Because poverty likes debt. Confusion is a symptom of poverty. Always confused. No solutions. Why are you always confused? It's a spirit of poverty manifesting through confusion. Because confusion will never breed prosperity. How can you make money when you're confused? Bad luck and misfortune is a symptom of poverty. We are making a war against poverty. So misfortune is part of the poverty package. Why do bad things only happen to you? Why you? It means on you is the spirit of what? Poverty. So you need to break it. Fighting helpers is a symptom of poverty. You fight people with the ability to help you. What the devil does to destroy people, he looks at your life, he scans your life and looks around your life and sees who has the ability, who has the capacity, who has the love and the patience and the anointing to lift you and he makes you fight that person or those people. Then you are friendly to all those who can't lift you. So, your fight with that person of greatness is not about the fight. It's not about whatever the argument, whatever you think you're arguing about. No. It's just to remove you from that person's presence. Hello? Because they are the one assigned by God to lift you. So to make sure that you're not lifted, the devil removes the lifter. Poor people are always fighting rich people. Go and check it. How do I know someone is a spirit of poverty? They water down other people's success. You water down other people's success. You make it look like ah, it's nothing. Oh, that's a nice Range Rover, mother. I saw mother driving yesterday. Ah, Range Rover, Range Rover. No, it's the new one. Ah, I saw a better one. Why aren't you driving a better one? Someone gets promoted. Ah, they slept their way into it. You, ass you assume everyone, male or female, who's promoted, slept their way into a job. Why? Why do? Why do people do that? Because listen, when somebody rises in your environment, it's an indictment on you. It's saying someone who you went to school with is doing better than you. What's wrong with you? Listen to me. Someone's prosperity asks you a question. Symptom of poverty. This one will surprise you. Easily offended. Very easy to offend. The Bible says offenses will come. But why is it easy for you? I've been maybe talking for about 45 minutes to an hour. I've offended you 17 times since I started speaking. <laughs> when you're easily offended, it's, the whole thing is just to push helpers away from you. This job that you want to get... Uh, the person who can connect you to that person is Nella. Ah, Nella, I don't like Nella. Why? What happened? Ah, you know, you know, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not what she said to me. It's how she said it. <laughs> can you see? Can you see? So the devil, knowing that in your upcoming future, Nella is the one holding the key. He creates an issue with Nella. What are you arguing about? Bananas. Bananas. That if you walk long enough in the forest, you can find more bananas. There are people you should never fight. There are people you should never fight. Sarah could not have a child. Hello? She's the one who started the discussion and recommended Hagar to Abraham. Abraham did not waste time. Two minutes. By the time she finished the sentence, Abraham was holding Hagar's hand already. Going into the bedroom. <laughs> there's, no, there's no wasting time. Hagar became pregnant. She gave birth to Ishmael. Am I right? Hello? And Sarah still had no child. So Sarah became jealous of something she started. Am I right? She was wrong in offending Hagar. But Hagar took offense from a greater person. Hello? And she picked an attitude with her master. Thereby she left the house of the master mistress offended. And what happened? The child began to starve because of the attitude of the mother. 
There are people you should never get offended at. Your boss, hello, your customer, your pastor, your helper, your president. And this is the quandary. You need rich people, but they are very rough. It's even in the Bible. So who benefits from the wealthy is the one who is patient enough to bypass all the roughness ah, and just take the honey and now you now deal with the bees. You'll be stung one or two times, but it's okay because when the honey comes, it's sweet. Why do you, why do you focus on the biting of the bees instead of focusing on the sweetness of the honey? Rich people carry honey with them. They carry wealth and you need it. You're black like me. You need money. You can never spend your attitude, but you can spend money from a rich person. There are men you should never fight with. What is the symptom of poverty? You can't be rebuked. You are angry when you are rebuked. So people who don't want to be rebuked, it is a symptom of poverty. Anger is a symptom of poverty. Moses failed to get to the promised land because of anger. Stop worshipping your anger. You can't go far with anger. If you add the word D to anger, it becomes danger. When you are angry, you destroy property, you destroy relationships, you destroy money, you destroy marriage. You don't really want to divorce that man. You are just angry. And then another relative of anger creeps in. Pride. Pride and anger, they move together. They are related. Pride is a symptom of poverty. But you know what poor, poor people say? They say rich people are are proud because uh, uh, and listen to the description of, of pride he's driving his big car <laughs> he lives in a big house ten, 10 12 rooms is it necessary is it ne no is it necessary for you to be in one room is it necessary for you to be in one room a symptom of poverty ego i don't know where it's coming from but it's there ego you want people to talk to you nicely yet you are poor Nicely for what? What have you done in the economy? Can I give you wisdom? Don't be angry at wealthy people. Imitate them. Imitate. Copy. Even a fool copies from somebody who's passing in class. Poverty will make you comfortable around poor people so you don't feel bad. If you're the wealthiest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. If you're the wisest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Get out of that room. Go where you are challenged. Where they say a word, you have to Google. Look at your friends. They tell you who you're comfortable with. You spend too much time with your friends from long back. That's why your life is too long back. God is saying, I behold, I do something. You say, I yeah, know. We grew up together. Are you still growing? Hebrews 6, 12. Be imitators. Do not be sluggish, laziness, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Imitate. Even the Bible is telling you that copying is good. But it's telling you who to copy. Those who have obtained, not those who have explained. Ah, if you follow a pastor with no results, you have just defined, def defined your, definition, your, your, your destination. You will soon arrive. You follow a mentor with no results. What is he going to teach you? Follow people with results. Even online, people follow results. How many can say a lot of these things were hidden? I didn't know it was poverty. Could it be that you have an attitude of poverty? You don't smile. I'm always serious. Hmm. You look 10 years older than your real age. When you tell people your age, you are, they are shocked. The Lord said to me, he says, do you know that poverty and prosperity can dwell together? Your level of success is dependent on how much poverty you have eliminated and how much prosperity you have put in. Let me use that example. Come. Lift up the glass there. Bucket. Just put the bucket there. And the, on her feet. Yes. Now, look at this. If... This here, yellow here, represents a tainted background or a poverty background. If this represents poverty, this is a black person. 
right? Then this is a white person. Look at how clear that glass is. Lift it up clearly. Lift it up so that they see how clear it is. Okay? Now, if this is the spirit of poverty in there, a white person does not have much of the spirit of poverty as you, a black person, does. Right? So where a black person, where a white person gives $20, come, come, into an offering basket, right? They're already prospering. So they've got more results from a $20 seed. Because they've got less, give me another one, spiritual cleaning up to do than you, a black person. So, this is the power to prosper activated by giving, given by a white person. Come bring it. So, they're already prospering. And the glass is very, very clear. Their life is clear. They've got properties. They've got opportunities. They've got favor. You, a black person, try this giving $20. What has changed? What has changed? So where, where, if you copy what white people do is they can give a hundred US dollars and you a black person also gives the same what? hundred US dollars. You then get frustrated because you are saying but this thing is not changing. So a black person must give and give and give and give and give and give and pray and fast and come for deliverance. I've never seen deliverance in white churches. And we keep pouring more word. You need more scriptures than a white person. Stand up. Stand up. Don't worry. Stand up. It must look messy because that's how it is. Because you, a black person, you must keep on and keep on and come to prayer shift another day. Then you come another day. White people are sleeping at midnight. But not for you because you're a black person. So you have, I need some more water. You have to keep and, and praying and studying and declarations. Whereas in, in Kenneth Copeland's church, they can just say, I'm standing on one scripture. The wealth of the wicked is <laughs> laid up for the just. And they just pray a very soft prayer. Father, I thank you because I know that the wealth of the wicked laid up for the just Lord I thank you for the grace for wealth transfer and I know that Lord you love me and that you will transfer this wealth unto me in Jesus precious name Amen Oga <laughs> you're in Africa <laughs> Father <laughs> wherever you are <laughs> Come down in your majesty. Jehovah, my mother was a Hittite. My father was a Jebusite. My grandmother was a wizard. And my grandfather was a witch doctor. So I call on the oil of God. And I command angels to stand in battle array. Even as I was praying at 6 p.m., but now it is midnight. Jehovah, I'm up again. Because you say, do not forget the stone from which you were hewn. Where others, Jehovah, they can afford to stop. Me, I can't afford to stop. Because my background is still showing. So I call on El Elyon. And I say, Jehovah, what my fathers planted must be uprooted. Even though white people have got nothing to uproot. Jehovah, I know from my background I must uproot some things. I must uproot failure. I must uproot uh, uh, the demonic forces. Lord, I know that where I come from there's deep witchcraft. So uh, Jehovah, where others can give a hundred US dollar, I need to sacrifice a thousand. Call Jehovah even is the dreams of a black person and a white person are different. A white person dreams of doves. A white person dreams of nice birds. But Jehovah, I'm tired of owls. 
So because of where I come from, I call on the God who destroys owls. Jehovah, I finish midnight prayer. Now I come to prayer shift. Where others give ten dollar, I can't afford. <laughs> I need to package five hundred dollars. Because in my background, blood was spilled. In my background, Jehovah God, I know that there are evil covenants. So because of this black skin, misfortune follows me. Bad luck follows me. Even if I'm doing the same job as a white person, they are paid 10,000. And I taught them to do the job, but I'm paid 2,000. So Jehovah, I cry out unto you. And I say, Jehovah, hey, Katabai, this yoke of poverty must be broken of my life. In the name of Jesus, I might have to pray a little bit more than my neighbor. I might have to give a little bit more than my neighbor. I might have to fast every week until Jesus comes because our backgrounds are different. And after all that drama, your glasses look the same. So how dare you pray like your neighbor as if you come from together. Where were you born? Who was your mother? Who is your father? You are in Zimbabwe. A place with no economy. A place that has broken all the economic rules and laws. Zimbabwe is a record breaker. Zimbabwe in the world is number one on inflation. And you want to give like you are in Canada. You want to pray like you are in Switzerland. So when I am telling you to be serious, it is because of where you are coming from. Do you know even if you are in Europe, hello, you can change your name to Cheeto Johnson. But there's a section of the passport that says place of birth. And there it is not uh, 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 Rochester, New York. Uh, it's, neither is it Dallas, Texas. Neither is it uh, 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 Lancashire or any other share. It is Hurungwe. <laughs> that means even your passport is telling you Urungwe is looking for you. So since Urungwe is looking for you, water, you better keep coming here and say, Men of God, I know Urungwe is looking for me. Because Urungwe is looking for you. Watch this. To put back what was taken out. And before you know it, your present looks like your past. So you don't say, why is it like this? You quinya your skirt. You roll your sleeve. And you say, I come from Africa. We are anointed to fight. We had to fight to get our land back. We had to fight to get our minerals back. And now we are fighting for our spiritual heritage. This contamination, I remove it. I remove it. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the African do? Man of God, you are always telling us to give. Yes, you are an African. Do you know how many chickens went on your behalf? How many goats? How many cows? How much human blood was sacrificed in your family? That's why I love Psalm 126. He who continually goes forth, not once and oh, once, once and once off, no, continually goes forth, weeping. Bearing precious seed, not nonsense. Shall come again rejoicing. So you have to do what you are doing the whole of September. 
continuously, 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 you are vetoing the chickens, you are vetoing the goats, you are vetoing the cows. Once in a while, you take a thousand dollars, you put it on the altar, you say, nonsense, I've got to change this thing, hallelujah, I've got to shift my destiny. Once in a while, you take a vehicle, you put it on the altar. Once in a while, you take some title deeds, you put them on the altar. Because you know in your family, you are not permitted to prosper. He said, write this man down as childless, this black man, a man who will not prosper in his days i know where i'm coming from if i want to die i can i just stop praying for one week that's all i need one week you think i'm doing prayer shift for you even if no one comes to prayer shift i'm here because i know I know they are still raising incantation. I know there are seven altars working against me and my wife. And the Lord said to me, you need to raise seven altars with a million US dollars on each altar. He said, because you and your wife every week are provoking satanic powers from the families of people you are delivering. So every week a prayer shift, you are getting fresh enemies, fresh enemies, fresh. I'll never stop giving even if you stop. Because I know what is following me. I know what is, uh, what, what is pursuing me. I know the blood in my background. I know how much my relatives hate me. Right? They are still consulting to this day. As we speak, they are right now. And I'm their agenda. I'm serious about what I'm doing. I'm focused spiritually. I can't afford to sleep from nine to nine. Because while men slept, there are things the enemy does. God bless you ladies. There are things the enemy does. But I prophesy as we wage this war against poverty. Oh, I declare we must win this time. I said we must win this time. I said this time you must win. Raise up that note. Say Jehovah God. I wage a war against every power of poverty in my background with this note i serve notice on poverty i declare i decree by the power of the holy ghost i eliminate poverty i have to do extra more than what my brothers and sisters might have to do my destiny is too big i can't afford to be lackadaisical spiritually so i raise this money unto heaven as a sign that my money as it is the altar it must veto demonic altars that are speaking on my behalf by the blood of jesus i silence every evil altar speaking against my finances jehovah god all these attitudes of poverty the man of god was talking about I know they are demonically inspired from evil altars. So today, as I raise this money unto heaven, Jehovah God, I cry out against you. And I say, Lord, wage a war against poverty. From my mother's side, from my father's side, wage a war against that poverty.